Hey you guys, thanks for tuning in. Tonight we have two versions of this video because Dan is such a wealth of information. We have the standard version, that's this version, it's about 20 minutes long. And then if you want a little bit more banter and all the detailed information, we have an extended version of the video. So you can skip this one and head right over to that one. Thanks for tuning in, I hope you enjoy the video. Hey everyone, um, super excited today. We finally get to look at Dan's um, FJ80. And we've been hanging out here in Alabama Hills. It's been just an absolute fantastic couple of days. Um, the weather's been perfect and you guys can see we're in this epic environment, it's awesome. We're gonna spend a little time with Dan. You are Overland Bound member 582. Right. Dan, you are VC Expedition on Instagram, correct? Right. Yeah, and I noticed that you have a, um, you've got a slogan which is, form follows function. Yeah, and why don't you tell us a little bit about y yourself, about that saying, how that came to be, and then we can talk about your eighty. Sure. So uh, I'm I'm an engineer with Toyota, in the research and development in powertrain, and I've worked there for a lot of years, thirty years now, but back in engineering school. I had a professor that had a big poster of the SR-71 Blackbird on his wall and underneath it it said form follows function and the SR-71 to a lot of people was just a not a very handsome plane but the purpose of that plane was very clear go fast and fly high right and that really made an impact on me and so uh, when I decided that I was gonna come up with a name and a little bit of a slogan it was more for me than anybody else but it sounded kind of fun you know, and the things I build for me, and we'll go through a few of them here, follow that mantra, form follows function, because they're not particularly good looking, <laughs> but they really perform well, and they're right. strong. They may be a little bit overbuilt, but they're not going to break, and they really perform their function well. And that's where it came from, and that's kind of what I stick with. All right. Hey, let's take a look. Let's start right up front here okay. um, with your bumper lights, and I see a couple other things on here. Yeah. So this is... Uh, an ARB, typical ARB, and when I when I started building this, I've owned this since uh, 1998. It's a 95. Um, this bumper was really the only game in town for an 80 series. It holds um, the Smittybilt 12,000 pound winch, uh, and, and the the best thing about it is it's part of the style that you you can adapt when you drive because now you can use this corner as <laughs> an indicator of that's right where I want to be. When you're up against a rock and you're rubbing up against a rock because you want to ease down a step or something like that, yeah. you're okay with it because all you have to do is come up here and brush the dust off and, you know, it's your physical, it's all good. physical indicator. Yeah. You get a little resistance. From and, and you rocks. know you're not going to hurt it. <laughs> I notice you have a, an air check here. I do. Built into the bumper. That goes along with the onboard air compressor that mm -hmm. I have on board. And I've got wires, uh, uh, lines plumbed up to the front and the rear bumper. But this is really handy because I have, when I go to air up, which is pretty frequently, I just pop this cool little cap off here mm -hmm. and I can plug into a line and I have just a short line that I can do the front tires and then I've got one on the back that I can do the back tires or I have a system then that I can air up all four tires at once. I have sort of a manifold system that I've made that I can do all four tires at once that's pretty handy. Lights? Lights up front, um, pretty old school. These are just halogen lights. Um, they work great for fog, but that's about yeah. all. So that's why I put these on here that are sort of a, a spotlight, straightforward bright light that work pretty well. These are not any particular brand, this but is I, just, I like that. This is just a little yeah. you know, quick great. access. Uh, I have a cover for the winch. When I think I'm going to use the winch, I take the cover off and I kind of prepare this. This is just one of those little <clears> flashlight <throat> holders that flips down and 
Yep. It holds it pretty tight. That's it doesn't great. rattle. All right, now, there's a couple of special things under this hood here. This is not entirely stock. No, not, not entirely. Mostly, <laughs> there's a couple of things I've done. One of the things that uh, I did early on, uh, I work at uh, Toyota and right across the next building, uh, TRD was doing their supercharger development on a couple of different engines. And, and I pretty much convinced him that the 1FZ needed a supercharger and I had just the thing for him. Uh, it, it dynoed out at about 300 horsepower at the wheel when mm -hmm. they were done with it. It, it. it just is enough to get it back to where it really should be uh, which is right. being able to go at least 55 miles an hour up the hills. <laughs> uh, how many miles does your rig have on it now? Just a little over 160,000 miles. It's a baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I try not to drive it too much. I've had a dual battery system for a long time. This, uh, the stock uh, from 94, 93 on had the battery on the driver's side but the 91 and 92 80 series had the battery on this side. So all I did was get the battery box that bolts right in and I put in the second battery and I made a, a solenoid here. It's a 200 amp solenoid that I control with a switch that does three things by the switch. It either completely disconnects the batteries so they're, they're completely disconnected and only the starting battery will charge. It connects them together, so they're always connected together no matter what. Or the third position is it only connects them together when the engine's running. I went and robbed yeah. a, a Taurus, Ford Taurus V6 engine electric fan, and I mounted it in front of the radiator, in front of the AC condenser, and I can turn it on with a switch on my dash that pushes air across my radiator and that helps cool it down, that helps keep the air conditioning cool and it helps me better manage the engine coolant temperature which is super critical on these engines. You really want to keep it in a, in a pretty narrow range between about 85 and 105 at the, at the max. I see some money um, being spent in my future. In I my think I future. can help you do that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if I had that cooling fan, I wouldn't have been shooting gas out of the gas tank. <laughs> <That's> probably. <laughs> or, or it seemed to me that we had a problem with uh, the top of the radiator. <laughs> on. Radiator problem. Maybe that. I don't remember. So yeah. I put in this PCV thing right there. Uh, it's actually uh, uh, just a uh, catch can that I've repurposed to run both of my diff lines into that, and then it has a fluid indicator. So if I am pushing fluid up through those lines by any chance, I'll be able to see it in that site. <laughs> that's good, that's great. Yeah. You know, that, that's, <laughs> exactly. that's the way my brain thinks. I guess uh, one of the things I've, I've concentrated on, especially lately, is uh, communications. Okay. And I have uh, worked into three different types of communication. My primary communication is a ham radio. Mm -hmm. And I've got a base mounted unit. It's a Yaesu FT8800. It's a really good unit. It's a dual band unit. I can uh, get uh, 70 centimeter and two meter uh, radio. I've got a four foot fire stick antenna to support it. My Cobra WX75 that I use, and this just, you know, it has a hidden unit itself that I plumbed into here and um, use it. this one. Everything is in the, in the handset, and that's for CB. Um, and then the third thing is with the InReach Explorer, this is really handy. Um, I finally talked myself into that when I didn't have cell phone communication and I was off grid enough that uh, my family became worried about me. Mm -hmm. When I finally be came back on and got back into communication, I found out that they were about to call the rangers <laughs> to come find me. So that's why this is handy because that uh, not only is a great mapping and a location uh, tool with a, with a linked iPad or a linked tablet of some kind. Yeah but also the communication tool. I have solar, I have a solar panel on top and I can control the input to either battery with a switch here. Um, 
here's the switch to control my battery and you can hear the solenoid up there clicking when I push that. I've got a 44 gallon Long Ranger Automotive <laughs> uh, fuel tank that uh, hurts every time I fill it up at the oh, yeah. where 40... it pumps, actually pumps the fuel from the auxiliary into the main tank so I can use it. Battery condition monitor here. It, it had a very cheap console. I didn't, I ha haven't seen one as cheap as this one had, but yeah. I lived with it for a lot of years until I decided that I needed a little security here. So I put in a Tuffy center console, which is great. I had to modify that, but then on the front, that wasn't good enough. So I had to, I, I put in all of these Ram mount one inch balls in front so I could use the Ram mount things here. I've got one, two and three places where I've got the one inch balls here so I can mount different things. Yeah. And that's become that's become pretty convenient because I've got my tablet mount here. I've got my cell phone mount here. This one is one of those cheap event things that you yeah. know your phone falls off when you go on a rough road, which yeah. I occasionally do. And so that's what this is for. This this really is the uh the heavy end of the car. Uh and and you'll see why as we delve into it a little bit more. I call it uh it's affectionately become my, my pack mule. Yeah. Um, so it, this is a Kmar rear bumper, and I think you can't even get these anymore in the US. I did get the, the one tire swing, and then it came with this, this little part right here that I then made this tower so I can have this little work light. I realized that, hey, this is, this is pretty useful. I'll be able to put other things on here. So as I built it, I built it for initially just to carry the, the water cans. And then on the side, I decided, you know, I need a place to put my shovel and my ax. And so I made it fit the S-wing ax that I have. I also decided that, uh, hey, underneath here would be a perfect spot to put my high lift jack base. Um, and back here is where a lot of things get thrown in. Uh, I've got a sleeping platform here that if I ever need to sleep, I just fold this top section. I can put the second seat down and put the first row forward and I can actually flip this over. It takes about three minutes to put in place and it provides a nice flat spot for one person to sleep if I need to. I used to do that before my trailer. I used to sleep back here. Um, front to back, I've got a CO2 tank in the front that I keep charged most of the time. I don't use that. That's not my primary. That's kind of my backup. Basically every tool I need to do anything I need to on this car. I've got all my tools in here. Everything from rebuild the berths to um, electrical issues. I've got parts and stuff, all my toolboxes here. And then I've got my, uh, my air tools in here to air down quickly, to air back up quickly. They're right here where I can get at them really easily. And I kind of have a thing about making sure everything's tied down too. Mm -hmm. I don't want things, if I'm going over a bumpy road, I don't want things flopping around. Yeah. And so I, I, I make a big effort to make sure that everything's secured. This is my uh, 12 volt welder. I can weld if I need to stick weld with two or maybe three batteries. I can, I can hook up three batteries. It's got the cables and the stick welder and everything and some fresh sticks. Um, ARB fridge is uh, something I've owned for a long time. Yeah. I, I think I bought this one when they first came out with this version of it. Uh, relatively new version. They had an old ARB, but when they came out with this one, this really appealed to me. It was ergonomic. I knew ARB was a good, good name brand to go with. Uh, low draw on the battery. Um, you know, you can dial whatever temperature you want. I have made ice cubes with this mm -hmm. as an experiment. Um, on top of that then is, is this thing, and you can see that this is pretty, pretty solid in itself, but I built this around two of these boxes and this one is for, this one is for dry goods. Yep. That uh, is really convenient because it's it's here right where I need the food and if I go away from base camp I know I still have sandwich lunch meat lunch food cookies yep all the essentials 
And then this one has turned into uh, where I just pack my clothes. And if I can't fit it in there, that means I'm going out for more than a week right. because I need a second pair of pants. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yep. Over here is the, uh, is the compressor. And it's a Puma one and a half gallon tank compressor. And it's uh, a good compressor. It gets a lot of pressure fast. And I can air up four tires um, very quickly and accurately. These sliders have been on there for a long time. And, you know, when I was kind of new, uh, side protection became important because the price of sliders is much cheaper than having your rails repaired by a body shop one, one time, right? So these are uh, sliders that uh, came from a company called 4 by Innovations. Okay. And uh, he was just beginning to build these and uh, they seem to be pretty decent. I like the little kick out and with an 80 series, especially 95 on, it takes a special slider design to protect the catalytic converters underneath. So that makes it a little bit expensive, but my cats are fully protected. And you look on the bottom of that skid plate and it's just like rock rash. Yeah. You know, that's one of the first things that, that will hit is your catalytic converters if you don't have any protection. Yeah, even before a lift yeah. and before big tires, if you think you're gonna do it, if you think you're gonna get into the sport, you know, sliders are, are cheap insurance. This is the funnest new thing I, I have. I, I used to have an, uh, an old original Confer roof rack, which was absolutely bulletproof and great, but it was really heavy and not very, uh, it had become not very utilitarian for me. Mm -hmm. And so I saw this uh, guy that was, made this uh, particular design similar to a Prinsu, but it's, uh, it's called Bofin Cruisers that designed this. And his unique design, which I really liked, uh, was the latches, the tie downs, which is an over center type of a latch. And then it bolts through here like this that really, really sold me on this rack. But it's the aluminum extrusion cross pieces, crossbars that uh, are really ni nice and they're all modular. And I've got my, I actually made a very simple mount for my high lift jack up here with a quick fist rubber clamp on the back to hold the back end of it because there's almost no weight back there. This is where all the weight is, so this is where the mount is. I just mounted my shovel up there with quick fist, mm -hmm. the simple bolt through that slide right in the extrusions, very simple. Did the same thing to my solar panel up there and very simple. Um, these are uh, Tread Pros. Tread is another Australian brand that competes with Max Tracks. Mm -hmm. um, I decided to go with Treads. Uh, what was the reasoning then? I think price mm -hmm. was a big was a big point. I actually made this, and it's it, it's you know super simple, and it comes off really easy. I don't want to unbolt anything. I don't want any any wing nuts that are going to get stuck or frozen yeah. or muddy or anything like that. So I just keep this on with with bungee cords and. You know, it's solid. One of the premier brands when I started building this was OME. Yep. That was kind of the brand to have. Uh, and I knew I wanted some quality because I didn't want to mess with it a lot. I didn't want to be changing parts or worrying about the quality of this. Uh, I have changed the rear springs twice. Started with a the mild spring and then I added my uh, the weight in the back, the bumper and everything. Um, and as I got heavier and heavier, I finally ended up with, I think they're the 864 springs, which are the highest uh, load rating uh, single rate spring that they had. Uh, and it does a pretty good job. It does a pretty good job with my trailer on there. It sits about level. I do have airbags in there to level out from side to side. And then with OME shocks and a stabilizer up front, it, it rides pretty well. One of the things I did add back here uh, was the Long Ranger automotive. I touched on it a little bit, but it's 44 gallons of gas. 
Yeah. And 44 gallons at eight gallon, eight pounds per gallon uh, can add some weight. So when I'm I'm fully loaded, full of fuel, it's pretty heavy going down the road. Yeah. And you you, you with the heavy springs, it really helps that ride. So Dan, I've learned a heck of a lot uh, just walking around your rig. Like I said, I think my, my, my pocketbook is, is going to get some dents in it after this. Well, it's been 18 um, years of education for me. <laughs> it, and, and it shows. It's, it's awesome. It's a very efficient rig. Um, how can people get in touch with you? I'm on Instagram. Okay. Uh, my handle is uh, VC Expedition. stands for Vehicle Centric Expedition. I'd love uh, some likes and yep. follows and shares. It's great. I love it. I have a lot of fun with it. Yeah. I think the, the 80 series folks are going to reach out to you. I'd be glad to. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of community wisdom around the 80s. They've been around yeah. for a long time, and there's a huge amount of knowledge. I'm yep. kind of scraping the surface a little bit. Mm -hmm. I've sifted out what, what works for me and what's kind of the fluff that I don't need. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'd be glad to. I, I could talk about 80 series and Toyotas all day long. So go check out uh, Dan. It's VC Expedition on, on Instagram. And um, we also might be collaborating on some more technical articles on overlandbound.com that Dan would write. Uh, he's got a wealth of information and knowledge given his background and look forward to, to doing stuff together. Yeah, I'd love to. Thanks, thanks again. Michael. Yeah, thanks a lot. All right.